Hello and welcome to a show called Romania Through Their Eyes. The reason for this show is a seeming contradiction in behavior between two groups of people in Romania, the foreigners and the Romanians. The latter want to leave the country. They're looking for any opportunity to find a life somewhere else. The former are drawn to it. They want to visit it. They want to spend time here. And quite a few of them want to move here permanently. Why is this going on? I'm going to try and shed some light on the matter with this show. It's a series of interviews with foreigners, people who've spent a significant amount of time in the country, know it well, and want to share their thoughts with me. I'm going to ask each person a standard set of questions. While they may be the same, their answers are going to be different and may surprise you. And who knows, one can only pray, they uh, may also end up enlightening those currently running the country and uh, helping to focus their attention on issues of international relevance. I hope you'll enjoy the show. Join me for each new episode. My name is Laurie Webb. Um, full name is Lawrence, but everybody knows me as Laurie. Uh, from Oxfordshire in England, and I will be 65 this coming July. I came here in April last year um, after visiting many, many times in the past. My first trip to Romania was 1992 and it's quite a long story actually of how I came to be here. Um, started off with humanitarian aid trips from the local churches in the town I came from, which was Wantage in Oxfordshire. We came in 92 and again in 93 uh, when I actually led the, the trip. In 94 I came with my late wife for a holiday to stay with the friends who I'd made in the village of Somersorece near Cluj. And my wife absolutely loved every minute of it. And there is a slight Romanian connection that her father was born in Timisoara of Schwab German stock. So she was half Romanian German or <laughs> however you like to describe it. Um, unfortunately, she contracted cancer. So uh, we were unable to make a trip in 97 when the church which we'd been helping to build by sending materials and money from the UK was officially opened but uh, she was having treatment so unfortunately that we could not come. I didn't get here again until 2001, shortly after she passed away, uh, when I came with a friend who'd also been one of the drivers on the 93 trip. We flew this time to Bucharest and just hired a car, travelled around, visited the friends near Somoso Reche and generally had a good time really. Um, I came in 2003 for the wedding of one of my friends from Cluj and again in 2005 with my daughter and fairly new at the time son-in-law. Um, just out of the blue my daughter had rung me and said next time you go to Romania dad we'd love to come with you so I had to arrange a trip and we flew to Budapest, hired a car stayed with the friends near Cluj two or three nights, drove to Yash, visited friends who were working for a charity in Yash, uh, then to Bucharest for a couple of nights and then back up via Sigishwara, which is about 20 kilometers from where I now live, um, stay one night Sigishwara and then back to Cluj for two or three more nights and finally back to Budapest and the flight back to England. In 2007, some friends from my church and the other churches who'd been involved in the aid trips, uh, who'd heard me and others speaking about Romania, seen our videos, our colour slides, uh, said to me, could I arrange a trip? So that came to pass. I was actually given a minibus by one of the customers of my sign making business. Um, it was lying in the yard with a broken back axle and they said uh, if I could fix it myself I could have it for nothing. So that was easily fixed and cheaply fixed 
and so we drove all the way three of us shared the driving and we had about a 16 day trip stopping a couple of times across Europe and then um, did again Cluj and Yash and Sigishwara um, there were nine of us all together yes um, which is the maximum we could legally bring without taxing the vehicle in a different way but it was a big big minibus so we had plenty of room to stretch out on the floor and plenty of room for all the bags uh, it was a very mixed bunch I was the oldest um, and the youngest was just 12 years old with, with his mother of course and uh, everybody except myself and one other lady on the trip had uh, it was their first visit to Romania and um, when we got back from that trip there were a few horrible things that happened in England with uh, a, I particularly remember a young lad up in the Manchester area being shot just as an innocent victim as he was riding past a, a gang battle on his bike uh, and three or four other things happened and I began to think did I really want to stay in England also with pensionable age coming up um, I thought I uh, would be struggling on the pension at UK costs. So in 2008 I came to my friends in near Cluj and one of the friends took me in his car on a house hunting expedition. Uh, we did find a house in Averig near Sibiu um, which was nice and large and I decided I wanted to do a bed and breakfast uh, the house would have been ideal but the price was absolutely astronomical um, so that one was out of the question and I started looking on the internet praise the Lord for the internet and found houses is it houses for sale in Transylvania I think it was called and this particular house immediately caught my eye as being for one British owned secondly near to many tourist attractions with all the fortified churches in the area um, the beautiful forest lots of hill walking country Sigishwara 20 kilometers one way Mediash 30 odd kilometers the other way and so after a few inquiries and a couple of trips over to look at the house I paid a deposit the owner was happy for me to wait uh, happy to wait until I'd sold my UK property uh, so which was sold within a matter of three days when I put it on the market in the UK and um, so I went to stay with my daughter for a few weeks until all my financial affairs had been tidied up and then bought a caravan hitched it up to my Audi estate and loaded both and came out here three day trip um, arriving on the 26th of April and I've been here ever since obviously uh, with two or three trips back to the UK to visit the family uh, usually flying although at Christmas I did drive back in my nice Romanian Dacia Logan MJV and um, the family have visited me once they came this is my daughter her husband and my two then two grandchildren um, on one of my trips back in May last year the third grandchild was born and the my daughter is coming again at the end of May this time it, well, it will be her third time in Romania this time my son is also coming this will be his first visit so it will just be a real nice close little family occasion no spouses or children to worry about so I'm really looking forward to that the house I bought is in a village called Arondala as I said 20 kilometers from Sigishwara and it's a traditional Saxon style house um, according to the date on the front it was built in 1920 and it's the standard layout I think at some time it may have been larger because the roof appears to be chopped off so there may have been outbuildings perhaps stables and so on and there certainly was a barn at one time but uh, I'm told it collapsed about five years ago 
Um, the house is gradually being converted into a pension. Um, there's one large room for guests at the moment which will be big enough to sleep six, a double bed, a bunk bed and a convertible bed uh, with ensuite facilities which were put in by a builder friend from Sigishwara and the whole thing there's still ongoing work at the moment but uh, it's, it's ready for guests as long as they're prepared to step over a few bits of building materials um, but then if they've ever been to Spain they'll probably be completely used to that sort of thing um, the nearest airport is Turgamuresh so I'm hoping that people can fly direct in there and I can pick them up or if they're not hiring a car they can also get to Sigishvara by rail quite very easily from anywhere in Romania or even from Hungary and Austria and again Sigishvara nice and close by so again I can offer pick people up and bring them to the Pensione. The area around it, it's in a valley the Laslia River Valley and there are lots of hills for walking there are tracks across the hills from one village to the next so you don't have to make your way all right back to the main road um, some very well-known places nearby are Beatan which has a beautiful fortified church uh, that's about uh, it's about 25 kilometers by road but only five or six kilometers across the hills if you're prepared to walk it or mountain bike it um, to the east is Malenkrav which again has a famous fortified church also richly decorated uh, with painted frescoes and again that's just across the hill on foot or on horseback or on bicycle uh, but three or four times the distance by road. My motivation for coming here goes back to the 1990s when I came on the aid trips. Uh, I immediately fell in love with the country and the people. We were just over the border and we were greeted by a lady who walked probably two or three hundred meters across a field to where we'd stopped for a cup of tea and brought us a bunch of spring onions and that uh, you know that sticks in my mind and always touched me um, I decided to come here as I think I mentioned uh, because I wasn't particularly looking forward to retirement in the UK uh, in July I start getting a pension from the UK which will obviously go a heck of a lot further here than it would over there with living costs being generally considerably cheaper um, Food has got a little bit dearer recently, but uh, I think that's a global thing. Uh, and I've noticed the price of diesel has gone up from about 4, four lay 85 to 5 lay 22. But still, compared with the UK, nearly 150 a litre, that is rather uh, a dramatic difference. Um, the search for a house, as I said, was started in 2008 and completed in 2009 when I found this place on the internet. Um, I made three trips across doing research just to make sure this was the thing I wanted to do and this was the place I wanted to be. Um, but after spending probably a total of four weeks in various bits of days here, days there, um, I toured around the area, visited quite a few of the villages where the fortified churches are, spent time in Sigishwara, introduced myself to some people in the House on the Rock, which is a Christian charity um, in the, right in the centre in the uh, Piazza Cittats, and found some, that it was uh, run by a lady from Scotland, so I was immediately able to talk about Romania with her. She had been here 15 years, I believe. Um, and it also, in, in time, I was introduced to another chap who's been here for 16 years. And I know somebody else who's been here for seven or eight years. And always their opinions are pretty favorable. Um, 
so there's no real downside as far as I'm concerned um, apart from the um, bureaucracy uh, I when I was setting up the company for Casa Costina my bed and breakfast uh, which incidentally is named in memory of my late wife who was a Christine so I've spelt it Christina the Romanian way um, which does prevent me present me with a slight problem if I find a lady in Romania that I want to marry she'll either have to be a Christina or be very prepared to accept <laughs> the house not having her name on it because that's the company registration name um, it took quite a while to get the company registered but I had a very good lawyer in Sigishwara and she managed to smooth everything down the government even changed the rules part way through and we had to go right back to square one and get some more papers signed but for me it wasn't a problem because I wasn't in a great rush I knew I wouldn't be ready for guests until at least May this this coming May um, so that bit of bureaucracy wasn't such a problem um, registering my car took a, a wee bit more changing the ownership um, the car still technically belongs to the people I bought it from because they can't sell it to a to a non-Romanian person and the company at the time wasn't registered so <laughs> that's all got to be sorted out uh, and will probably be a day trip to Odohe Sequiesque where the car came from but nevertheless I bought it from a dealer so he will help me through it um, other bits of officialdom I've come across well I have a, um, a residency agreement it's not a not a permit as such but uh, it means that I don't have to keep reporting every three months um, to make sure I don't get thrown out of the country so I have a CNP number um, which can go on all sorts of documents and usually satisfies people especially the banks um, differences from England uh, a much more laid-back way of life which suits me down to the ground because I was always very so laid-back I was horizontal was uh, quite often quoted to me um, the cost of living in the UK has it was getting expensive and since I've left uh, I've been keeping tabs on things and it has risen quite dramatically um, now, I often hear on, I listen to BBC Radio 2 on the internet as a way of keeping in touch with the UK and so many things I hear on there, people protesting about this, that and the other, um, the council tax where I used to live used to cost me, um, if I remember correctly, it was about £85, £90 pounds per month and that was with a 25% reduction because I was single occupant in the house. Here I've just paid my equivalent of council tax uh, which was again let's see remember 300 and 390 lay for a whole year that's about 80 quid um, so <laughs> dramatically different I have no water rates to pay here because I have the water comes from a well in the garden um, so there's that side okay electricity is relatively expensive um, it's about two-thirds the price of electricity in the UK possibly slightly more than that maybe three-quarters um, gas I don't have mains gas in the house the cooker runs from bottled gas which is um, oh, 16 pounds per bottle every time I buy a bottle 80 lay um, but that lasts quite a oh, six weeks or more um, I do a fair bit of cooking with it so that's not a problem um, other expenses so far for me have uh, basically only been for the car um, once the business is up and running then I've got charges to pay here and there which I will have to wait and see what they're going to be um, but generally I'm thoroughly enjoying life here um, I've been I've met quite a few people in Sigishwara um, 
Now, as a Christian, I've always believed that the Lord has either put me in the right place at the right time or put them in the right place to cross my path exactly when I needed them. Um, that's how I met my builder. He went to a, goes to a church in Sigishwara, which I now go to. When they found out that I used to play bass guitar in my home church in the UK, they said, oh, you must join us. So I've had to go to Turgamirash, buy a new bass guitar, because I'd sold mine before I left the UK, thinking I wouldn't need it again. Uh, and have now played the last two Sundays, um, and the next, well, the next Sunday of play, and then we've got to do a youth conference um, on Saturday, the, must be the 26th, I think. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, life is beginning to get quite busy for me. Um, for the first few months, I was more or less just sitting around while the builder got on and did the building work. Um, I, I wasn't really, well, all I did was basically made coffee for them and uh, cooked, a, cooked an omelette for their lunch or a pizza or something. Uh, but apart from that, I was just uh, standing back and watching. Um, now I'm doing a bit of decorating myself to get the house sorted. And... Um, the uh, a few things like the garden will be sorted this uh, in the next months or so once the soil has dried a little bit after the melted snow. Um, hope to grow vegetables. Uh, certainly put some onions and carrots. Um, potatoes I'm not sure about because last year I found three dead Colorado beetles floating in my small swimming pool. Um, so. I don't know whether to risk it. If there's a Colorado beetle around, they would probably destroy the crop. So I may just stick to buying potatoes um, and just grow onions, which not many pests like to eat. Um, and as I say, carrots, some beans, peas, perhaps a few other things. Um, but uh, in, as I say, in general, life is suiting me fine. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, um, apart from friends in Sigishwara, there's two or three people in the village who speak English. So um, there's always someone to phone up and talk to or go and have a meal with. Since coming here, I've been involved with the restoration work of the Sibiu Agnita Narrow Gauge Railway. Uh, I've been a rail buff all my life, coming from a railway family. Father was a driver, grandfather was a station master, and even my mother worked in the uh, locomotive depot on the wages, as a wages clerk. Um, I noticed the narrow gauge railway in 2008 when we were house hunting with my friend from Cluj. And there was a signal which was all freshly painted, which was the reason I noticed it. Uh, you couldn't see the track because it was buried in the grass, but the signal was there, woof. And so I did some research on the internet and learned all about the railway. And when I came in, I think it was June or August uh, 2009, I met up with the president of the group, Mihai Blotor, and um, said I would get, uh, I would be interested in becoming involved. I was quite happy to come and do volunteer work. I would, had lots of tools with me from England which could be made use of. So once I was here, I think I made my first trip down to work oh, only about a month after getting here. And since that date, I've helped to restore uh, one carriage which was put back on the track in September and pulled along the track by a borrowed steam locomotive uh, to celebrate the centenary of the opening of the railway throughout from Sigishwara to Sibiu. The Sigishwara Agnita piece was closed in 1965. The Agnita to Sibiu closed in 2001. Uh, hence all the track work and the station buildings, uh, infrastructure is still there. Needs quite a bit of work to restore it, but we're a determined group, um, described as young volunteers. I don't think I quite fit in that category, but uh, enthusiastic, yes. Um, we had visitors from England, from the UK, from England and from Wales, 
came over in September for the centenary celebrations and as a result of that a UK supporters branch has been set up um, to advise and raise funds for the SAR which is was absolutely great news. For anyone coming to Romania I would say well by all means come it's a beautiful country there's lots of things to see absolutely steeped in history and the the way the farming is done is so traditional it's just unbelievable to see um, but one thing to watch out for is Romanian drivers um, don't be surprised if you're obeying the speed limit through a village which is 50 kilometers an hour and you're overtaken by an arctic doing about 80 kilometers an hour it's happened to me time and again um, cars yes especially those um, German makes who I won't mention uh, always seem to overtake no not VWs but Audis and V and Mercedes and uh, BMWs um, <laughs> the uh, will tailgate you into the village trying to make you go faster and then just when you're least expecting it approaching a pedestrian crossing or something like that and poof, past they go so yes be very alert keep one eye in the mirror all the time um it does make driving a little bit difficult but uh, yeah um i've had one minor accident here with my English car but at that course I was on the wrong side of the the vehicle and ran into the back of somebody because I was too intent on uh, making sure the roundabout I was crossing was clear uh, and then accelerating and looked ahead and oops there was another car in front of me stopped at a pedestrian crossing but uh, yeah, it was only minor damage and not a problem um, the the roads themselves are generally pretty good um, we complain about potholes or the Romanians complain about potholes but they haven't been to England lately I assure you um, England is far worse for potholes um, they tend to be longer and deeper in England than they are here um, when you get good good roads the there seem to be a lot more straight stretches of road here um, safe overtaking is much easier because you don't have hedges beside the road blocking the view um, it's open side open fields you can see across and um, on the on the level bits anyway um, on the hilly bits well it can be a little bit uh, risky at times um, because you only have a very short space to overtake and no doubt as you start to overtake you'll find somebody suddenly coming round the other way just at the wrong moment they've already crossed a solid line but they don't seem to bother about that here um, speed limits and no overtaking and things like that seem to be widely ignored um, so be careful that's all I'm saying <laughs> Because I've been coming to Romania for what 18, 19, uh, yeah, 18 years, um, I had picked up a few basic Romanian words: "buna ziua," "buna dimineața," "buna seara," "noapte buna," so on. Um, and before I came, I made sure I knew quite a few foodstuffs, so I could go into the supermarket and know where to find the the cartof, potatoes, chapa, onions, and. Uh, Markova, carrots, etc., etc., and um, as one of the things the House on the Rock in Sigishwara do is have Romanian lessons for English-speaking students, mostly American, um, and. In the middle of last year they found out about my previous life in the UK which involved some graphic design and asked me if I would like to design a new leaflet for them for their um, handover of the leadership to a new chairman or new president I forget what she's called officially um, so I said yes yes do that uh, and they said how much do I want to be paid so I said well don't pay me just sign me up on your Romanian language course and um, I'm yet to manage to get started on it because fitting it in proved a little awkward um, and I think now it will be done as a one-to-one -one basis rather than me joining a class of American students um, because I can that way it can be tailored to suit my needs 
so I can communicate with the villagers um, when I have guests if I'm showing them around places I'll be able to talk to local people and say where is so-and-so who's who's got the key for the church all this sort of thing um, I'm almost learning daily uh, because I have a couple in the village who come and do work for me chainsawing wood chopping wood um, the girl comes and cleans the house etc uh, they speak absolutely zero English so I've had to learn very fast um, about what they they want to do and so on and that what I want them to do so but we're, we're getting there we, we can uh, communicate a lot easier now um, so yeah it's I was always pretty good at languages at school um, did French over level a year early because there were three or four of us who were so good at it I've forgotten most of it now of course that's so many years ago um, did some German as well and there are Germans in the village um, and some of the locals often say to me Sprechen Sie Deutsch so I say well Ein kleiner Deutsch and then the uh, add quickly puts in the woman as well <laughs> so they uh, they know I'm not going to be fluent in their language either um, but uh, no it's uh, it's gradually coming together language wise uh, as I say the most important thing was to learn the foods so I could go into a shop and if I couldn't see what I wanted at least I could ask and know if they, they point them out or say that they Sorry, they didn't have any. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm quite happy going shopping. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so. As we're now approaching the end of my first year here, um, the intention is to be here for at least ten years. I'm fit and healthy, no no health problems, uh, no back pains or rheumatism or anything like that. Um, in fact, probably. A lot of people, apart from the white hair, a lot of people can't believe I'm 65 nearly. Um, if I dye my hair, I'd probably pass for 45. Haha, <laughs> says he wishfully. Uh, but yes, 10 years here, maybe more if things are going well. The plan is to develop the business. Um, at the moment, as I mentioned, I only have one guest room but can sleep six. And if things go well, then Casa Cristina Rondola will expand there is plenty of garden to build on maybe a couple of extra rooms um, with just twin beds for couples coming or smaller uh, groups and um, there are so many things to see and do around here I'm pretty sure that uh, people will start coming um, my website is up and running, so that's Casa Cristina Rondola.ro. And so uh, hopefully people will start looking at that and start phoning me or emailing and uh, coming and staying. Only I've got a couple of bookings so far, but then things are in the very early stages, and um, I'm trying to increase the publicity by advertising in magazines in the UK. Obviously my target market is the UK. Um, as I, th I think we, we Brits are a pretty insular lot um, and I think people will feel happier coming to stay with another Brit in Romania who can then talk them round things and show them things so they don't have to worry about language problems themselves. Um, if they speak Italian they could probably get by anyway and maybe even a bit of French but uh, in general um, not many Brits take take the trouble to learn other languages so I'm sort of uh, <laughs> counting on that as one of the, the selling points that uh, people will say ah yes an expat Brit running a bed and breakfast uh, yep yeah, yep yeah, we'll go so yep yeah. See you soon, I hope. Did you enjoy the show? Do let me know what you think in the comments below. And please uh, take a few seconds to like it or fave it or uh, share it with your friends. Show me that you want to watch it and I'll be glad to get to work on uh, 
more interesting interviews. Thank you. Till next time.